And this is going to put us out into the snow field. And we'll be introduced to a lovely little snow giant who's come down called Broggy. Now, Broggy is hungry. Probably a good, good idea when you encounter a hungry troll to save your game. So he's hungry. He's not going to be very helpful um, to you unless he's, you know, unless you feed him. Well, guess what? We happen to have 50 small apples. <gasps> That's why we bought them. Now, if you didn't buy them before, head back over to town. The market's still open. Buy the 50 apples. Come back here and give them to him. If you don't have money, uh, you can collect more mushrooms and flowers uh, and, and sell them to get them enough money to do that. Once you do give Barugi the flower, uh, the apples, he will, uh, in turn, give you a glowing gem. And you'll be able to see that in your inventory right there. Nice little glowing gem. And you're going to need that gem later on. So it's very important that you, you do that. And you'll get eight points for doing that as well. So now we're going to head back west to the main... Uh, we'll head west back to the healer. And then we're going to go south to the main town gate. And then we're going to keep going south. Three screens south to Spiegelies. Ah, look how beautiful it is. Nice little area. Just kind of look. Some peaceful reflection. You'll actually get a point just for looking and noticing everything around in the area. So that's why we went down here. So we're going to go back north one. Whoops. Where, where, where? Come on, go north. And then head west. Oh, and we're being approached by a uh, monster, so we will go ahead and engage in battle. Go ahead and search. You're not going to find anything because they're cheap little dinosaurs. And then we are going to... We're heading to Meep's Peep. I believe is north of here and then west. Oh, that's the mushroom. Ah, go north again and then west too. See, even when you know what you're doing, you get lost. <laughs> Ah, another, another battle. Once we get the flame dart spell, uh, I'll be using that in combat, but for now, I'm just going to use the dagger. Here we are. This is Meep's Peep. Now, you're going to talk to any of the meeps, and a green meep will pop out and have a little conversation with you. Go ahead and click the green button. Ask him about meeps. And you can ask him about anything else you want. Definitely make sure you ask him about meeps, because I will get you a point, but make sure you ask him about magic. Because he's going to say, I found a scroll. Do you want it? And he'll go back down, get a scroll, and then you can go ahead and pick that scroll up. 
and you will learn the spell Detect Magic, which of course you will need later on. Now that you've got the Detect Magic spell, let's go ahead and take a look at what time of the day it is. It's mid-afternoon, so we've got plenty of time. It's always important to keep an eye on, on the time. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the Flying Falls. So we're going to go east of here, uh, and then we're going to go south one, and then east, back through the Mushroom Ring. If you want, you can get more mushrooms. And we're going to keep going east. This is the a little practice area. We're going to be doing more here. Um, so don't go that far east. But you can um, go south. Once, If you hit that, go back west and then go south one. And then go east. It's a little archery range. And we're going to head all the way east on this level. You should pass this log that's here. Very kind of out of the place log. And you'll be at the Flying Falls. Very cool. Uh, at this point, it's, imp it's, it's I would definitely tell you, save your game here. If you haven't been saving all along, make sure you do it here because there's a really good chance of dying here. Uh, just from my, my habit. Now, you can notice there's this weird looking door here, right? Looks like a door. Well, good thing we have the detect magic spell. Go ahead and cast that. Oh, look, there's a ladder. So we're going to go ahead and climb up that ladder. Knock on the door. And he's going to tell you to step aside. Now the key thing here is don't fall down. Move aside because he's going to swing that door open. He'll knock you off. But step aside just enough without you falling off. Because otherwise he'll open the door and he won't see you. And then you'll have to go through the whole thing again. So now you've met... The Hermit, and his name is Henry, Henry the Hermit, and uh, I'll have a little bit of talk with him, la la la, and go ahead and uh, ask him some questions. Go ahead and make sure that you, you can be, ask him about, ask him who he is, ask him about being a hermit, ask him about the cave. Ask him about his family. Ask him about the falls. They call them the flying falls. Ask him about the ladder and magic. Ah, Erasmus. He talks about Erasmus and the ladder. Ask him about Erasmus, his friend, and Fenris. Ask him about games. And ask him about Fenris the familiar. We'll be meeting them. Make sure you ask about spells. And then ask him about the trigger spell. And then, of course, ask him for the scroll. Because now, you'll learn the trigger spell. Of course you will. And then make sure you grab it so that you learn the trigger spell. And of course, you'll need that later on. Now go back and make sure you ask him about brigands and the warlock. Tells you about a mirror that he borrowed. Ask about the mirror. Mirror reflection. Cast If a spell is cast at you, it sends it back. That's pretty much all you need to do. You can go ahead and leave. He tells you that you can always stay here at night. Then go ahead and climb back down the invisible ladder. Back to the healer's hut. So we're going to go west once. And then we'll go ahead and go north a few times. Get around that log. Back to the main gate of Spielberg. Now, might as well just save it. That was a little bit of a scene, so let's make sure we save the game here. And now is probably a good time to go ahead and check and see what time of day. Sunset's approaching. So now is a really good time to head back to um, Arana's Peace 
to sleep there. Check our money. We don't have enough yet for the flame dart spell. So we're going to head back to Arana's Peace, which means we're going to go north to the healer's hut, west to the farm. And we're going to head all the way north from the farm till we can go north no farther. And then head east once. Whoops. You can tell uh, if you notice there's a little bit of like a pause whenever a monster shows up. Like a little bit of hang up as it loads. So you can tell when a monster's coming. Uh, so it gives you a good, good chance to save your game in that regard. Uh, so that you can make sure you can defeat them. So now we're at Arana's Peace. We're going to go ahead and sleep until morning. And that will give us an extra five points for doing that. Okay, so now that you've awoken... Um, you, you should be full. You don't need to eat anything. Um, but you can always try to see if you need more flowers. That's always an option. Uh, I mean, more fruit. Now, make sure you go ahead and get some flowers. Now, you get paid one silver for every flower. We're going to go ahead back south, and we're going to head down to the healer's hut so we can sell those flowers. and head east here to the healer's hut. And of course you have two bunches, so just make sure you give her all the flowers you have in your inventory. And now we can go check and see how much money we've got. Good. So now we've got 62 uh, silver pieces all together. So let's go ahead and leave. That means we have enough money to buy the flame dart spell, which is 60 silvers. So let's go ahead and head back to the main entrance to the town. Head back over to Zara's magic shop. Zara will appear and we'll get our money out so we can buy our flame dart spell. Now this will really help us out with um, combat. But it'll also come in handy for our next <coughs> for our next quest. Our next, our next step, if you will. So now that we know flame dart, we're gonna head back out to the healer's hut. We're going to go east one. And then we're going to go north twice. And then east twice. And this will actually take us to Mount Zarberg. And we're going to go ahead and start walking up there. And as you walk, you'll encounter some signs. Hello. Welcoming you. Telling you to proceed at your own risk. And you're all the way up this path. Do, 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 do. And you'll encounter a gargoyle and a gate. And the gargoyle is going to go ahead and ask you some questions. And in order to get into the tower, you must answer these questions correctly. Answer to me these questions three. What is your name? Of course, you want to ask, answer your real name, Daspian. What is your quest? You want glory? What is the thief's password? Now, of course, you don't know the thief's password because you're not a thief, so you don't know. And you're allowed entry. Now, of course, those questions, uh, some of those are, are very, and even the way I said them, was very much in the way of uh, Monty Python's Search for the Holy Grail. Um, and there are other questions he may, the gargoyle may ask you. So instead, he may ask you the, your favorite color, 
which the correct answer would be purple, like the house, or you could also answer red and black because that's the color of your outfit. Uh, he could ask you whose spell protects the town. Of course, that's Arana. He could ask who you seek. Uh, of course, you're looking for Erasmus or Fenris. This is where they live. Uh, he could also ask you what the Baron's first name is. And of course, uh, it's Stefan, but make sure you spell it correctly. It's S-T-E-F-A-N. Uh, it will pr actually present you with a couple different options. Uh, they're all arguably correct, but there is a particular way that he spells his name. Once you get into this next room, don't touch anything. You can look all you want, but don't touch anything. Just go ahead and go up the stairs to the next level, and you'll meet Erasmus and his familiar Fenris. Now, these two guys are quite uh, interesting, and they're um, comical to an extreme, if you will. So now he, Erasmus will, before you can even talk to him, he'll say, oh, uh, you seem to know magic. And he'll ask you if you know the open spell, he'll ask you if you know fetch, he'll ask if you know flame dart, and then he'll ask if you know trigger. Which are all the spells you need to know in order to play Mage's Maze. And he'll ask if you want to play. And of course, you say yes, because you want to play, and you'll learn the Dazzle spell if you win. And you also get some points. Now is probably a good time to go ahead and save the game. I like to save it under a different name for this. Now the objective, before we actually get into it, let's talk a little bit about the objective of this game. Your objective is to move your piece, your character, through this maze, going over bridges, moving rocks and um, ladders and whatnot, and you're going to become bigger and smaller and so forth. And the objective is to get to the end of the maze before Erasmus does. And when you do, he'll teach you the Dazzle spell. Now, if you fail, you can just... We'll save it and just keep restoring it until you can get through it. Uh, I mean, there's clearly a lot of strategy here because you can actually move ladders uh, away from his character so um, you know to prevent him from doing anything. So just keep that in mind as you go through this game. Your character is the blue one. You can't really direct where the flame goes. And you have to, so certain sizes, so you have to be big to get down there. You can't go through the little door. So now you're going to learn the Dazzle spell. Now, once you've done that and you've learned the magic spell, the Dazzle spell, you can go ahead and ask him questions. Make sure you ask him pretty much about everything. Ask him about all the spellcasters that are in the area. Ask him about Fenris. You can't talk to him while he's drinking tea, which is a little annoying. And of course, they fight like old married couple. So make sure you ask about Zara. Ask about Baba Yaga. Stay on her good side. She cheats. Ask about curses. Talks about the curse that she placed upon the Baron and upon Spielberg. About counter curses, which is a cure for a curse. And now he tells her the counter curse for the Baron. Come a hero from the east, free the man from in the beast. Bring the child from out the band, drive the cursor from the land. So to break the curse, you must get rid of Baba Yaga, in addition to everything else that was mentioned. Ask about the magic mirror. Remember, Henry the Hermit told us about the magic mirror, and it would reflect a negative spell. Ask about Arana. Gives a, a forewarning of Arana. 
Ask about the protection spell that she's placed around the town of Spielberg. Ask about Arana's places. Uh, ask about spellcasters. Tells you a little bit about the wizard and going to the Wizard Institute of Technology in Shapir. And then, of course, ask about the mage's maze. And once you're all done, you can just go ahead and try to walk. And he'll just shoot you back down to the bottom of the mountain. And then we can go ahead and head back to... Um, we're actually going to head back to Arana's Peace. So we're going to go to west. We'll go north one. And then to west again. Then north. And we're right back here. Whoops. No, we're not. We're going to head east. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. Head east. Then head north. And now we're right back at Arana's Peace. So good time to check and see if we can get some fruit here to help restore. We can, because remember, climbing that mountain is very... Uh, takes a lot of stamina. And we go ahead and pick some flowers. Head back down. So right now, we're actually going to head down to the Mushroom Ring. So we're going to go all the way south until we hit the farm. Okay, and then once you hit the farm, we're going to go ahead and head west three times. And when you hit the goblin training camp, head south. We'll go south twice and we'll hit the mushroom ring. And we're back here. Now's a good time to go ahead and save the game if you haven't already. Now, essentially, we've done a lot of like little things here that are basically setting us up for the big quest, accomplishing the big quest in this game. One of the main things that we need to do, though, is get money. And it's not going to be easy. Um, to do that. And basically, we need to buy the Undead Ungent. And uh, you shouldn't... So first off, here's the thing. You shouldn't buy the Undead Ungent until you've got a good set of... Uh, you, you need... Well, first off, you need 100 silver in order to buy it. So it's expensive. So you need a lot of money. You also want to make sure your skills are built up um, because it's going to start kind of a, a string of events and you're going to want to make sure that you're, you're ready for those. So there's that. Um... There's a couple ways to make money. Now, if you're a fighter, uh, you, as you know, you can make five silver a day from working in the stables. If you're a fighter, um, it's actually really good to work in the stables because it helps build, to, build up your stamina and your strength. So doing that every day is very helpful. Um, you'll also earn, of course, five silvers from that. Uh, another way is, of course, as we talked, is to sell flowers, which we've got some. You can only have two bushels of flowers at a time. And uh, magic mushrooms. Now, here's the thing with magic mushrooms you can actually carry as many magic mushrooms as you want. So, one of the great things to do is just sit here and click and keep buying magic mushrooms. And you can buy as many as you need. Now, magic mushrooms will net you one gold her. So you really only need 10 magic mushrooms um, in order to max out. So we're going to head back to north and then we're going to head back three east to the uh, farm and then to the healer's hut and see how many magic mushrooms we can get her to buy. Word of caution, don't eat 
magic mushrooms. You can eat, I think, one or two, but if you eat too many, you will die. So um, don't. Don't eat too many of them. Back at the farm, go ahead and head east to the healer's hut. Right, there we go. Let's go ahead and sell her the flowers. It's not going to net us a lot, but it's going to net us a few silver. And now we can go ahead and sell her the mushrooms. Now you're going to get one gold for each. Now we have, let's see, let's make sure here, six gold, 60 silver. We got enough. So let's go ahead and buy that undead ungeon from her. Great. So now we've got it. So now we can actually continue on with our quest. Yay. All right. So now we're going to head over to Baba Yaga's hut and start this bad boy. So let's go over to the farm. And actually what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go ahead and save it right now so that we know where we are before we get down there. And so let's go ahead and head three screens west, and then we're going to go two screens north. And did I go too far north? Or No, I didn't. Okay, we're good. Two north. And we end up at Baba Yaga's hut. And of course, the skull on the gate's talking to us. We gotta get through past the skull in order to even get into the hut. So, we've got to basically agree to deal with him, so let's go talk to him. We'll ask him, ask him basically about everything so that we know what he's looking, what he needs. Ask about Baba Yaga and the Ogress. Ask her about the hut. So we find out that the hut will squat if, if it says a rhyme. And uh, the rhyme is hut of brown, now sit down. Now that's very important because if you don't ask the skull that particular question about the rhyme, you won't be able to ask him later on. So it's incredibly important that you ask him the about the hut and then about the rhyme before you do the deal. So he basically, he wants glowing eyes to look just like all the other skulls. Now, we happen to have a glowing gem. So yeah, it's a deal. And all we have to do now is bring him a glowing gem. Now, of course, if you've gotten this far and you haven't asked him about the hut or the rhyme yet, make sure you do it now before you give him the gem. Because if you give him the gem, he'll go away. And if you don't know what the rhyme is, you won't even be able to put input it. So we're going to go ahead and give him the gem that we got from the frost giant. And now he's really happy and excited and he hates how he look. And he's going to go ahead and open the gate for us or lower the gate as it will. Great. So now's a really good time to save it. And I'm going to save it as game two, just uh, just in case. You know, you never know if something happened, we did something wrong. And then you're going to talk to the hut, and the hut's going to kind of jump down at you. So don't walk into the gate. Note, I mean, we stayed where we were. You don't need to walk into the gate. Uh, if you do, the hut will jump down and land on you, and you'll die. So don't go past that gate. Uh, so now I just use the mouth again, and uh, I'll ask what the rhyme is. And you know that it's hut of brown. Now sit down. So the hut's going to go ahead, sit down, and then you're going to go walk right in. Now, Baba Yaga does not like visitors. She doesn't like anybody, all right? And with a face like that, I kind of don't blame her. <laughs> but we're now going to basically have to, like, bribe our way into staying and uh, being useful to her. So... She's basically, she's going to freeze us in place, and then she's going to have a little bit of conversation with us about various things. I'm going to talk about eating us, making, making us into a frog, 
which she just did. Gonna think about killing us and cooking us, making some frog legs, fricassee. Now she's gonna ask us her name. Now we wanna say yes. Because this is going to be our chance to really, you know, identify with her and get her to let us go in exchange for, a, you know, a task. So we're going to say yes, indicating that we will do something for her. And she's going to explain to us that she needs uh, the mandrake plant that grows in the graveyard. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely go get that. If you're going to let us go, we'll definitely go get it for you. So they tell us that Mandrake Root must be pulled at precisely midnight. Okay, so that's... Thing, I mean, so we gotta, we're going to have to watch our time and make sure that we pull it just at the right time. And then we have to return with the mandrake route to Baba Yaga that next day. If we are late, she'll kill us. So it's basically get the route, go back to Baba Yaga's, and uh, give it to her. And of course she'll turn us back into a human. Again, great time to save the game. We've gotten through Baba Yaga now, so let's go ahead and save that. Okay, so now our mission is to go ahead and get the uh, Mandrake group from the graveyard. So let's go ahead and check and see what time it is. Sunset approaches. So the good news is, is that we're actually really close to midnight, arguably. I mean, it's not mid-morning, so we don't have to burn a lot of time. Uh, now we just have to keep a watch, because we're going to be out at night, so we can't go back to town. We have to stay out, and we're going to have to kind of basically wander around, find something to do um, until it becomes middle of the night. And we need to make our way to the graveyard. So that's where your little map is going to come in handy. So we're going to leave Baba Yaga's and uh, we end up over here at the lovely goblin compound. Now, the graveyard is just, um, whoops, went too far. Go back west. The graveyard is just one south and two east. Jeez, I just keep going the wrong way. It's, the so from Baba Yaga's, the graveyard's two south and then two east. I'm walking so fast that I can't click in time while talking. Um, it's my own fault. So here's the graveyard. Beautiful. Okay, and that's the mandrake root right there. Now, don't pull it now because we have to come back when it's midnight and pull it. So we basically have some time to kill while we wait for uh, midnight to ro come around. So now's a great time if there's like people we want to uh, fight or whatnot. Now's a great time to do that. Okay, we just got the message that we're getting tired, which is what we were looking for. And now that we check the time, we can see that it's the middle of the night on day three. So let's go ahead, let's save real quick. I'm going to actually create a new saved game for this, just in case. And what we're going to want to do is, before we do anything at this time, we're going to use the undead ungent. So that's that big bulbous bottle here. We're going to go ahead and use that on us. Now, this is actually going to protect us from the undead. Okay? So now we're going to go to west. And then one south. You see the undead coming around. And we're going to go one east. 
Now we're in the graveyard. Now, if we weren't if we weren't wearing the undead ungeon, these ghosts would be attacking us and we'd die. So it's important that you wear that's why you had to save up that money for the undead ungeon. It's gonna keep them away. Alright? Now we're gonna walk over to the Mandrake root and just pull it right out of the ground. And now we've got it. Nice and simple. Now, once we've got it, we're going to go back over to Baba Yaga's and turn it in. So we're going to go west one, or two, excuse me, we're going to go west two, and then just go north until we have Baba Yaga's. Now, something I want to point out here, I mentioned this earlier. If you did not ask the healer about the Mandrake route, oops, I may have gone west too many, my bad. West 2, uh, and then north, and you'll go through the goblin training camp. If you did not ask the healer about the Mandrake root, you would not have seen that red root in the graveyard. So that's kind of why it's important that when you, uh, earlier in the day, you go by the graveyard and make sure that Mandrake root is there. Because if it's not there, that means you didn't ask somebody about it, and you need to go back to the healer and ask her about the Mandrake root. Otherwise, it won't be there. And that's happened to me, actually, a couple times. So, very important that you do that. So you get to Baba Yaga's, and uh, the, the gate's going to automatically open for you. Use Again, use the mouth on the hut so it jumps down, and then again to tell it the rhyme, and again select Hut of Brown. And then you'll go inside. And once you go inside, she'll go ahead and take it from you, and you'll be off the hook. Kind of loves turning people into frogs. I don't really understand. But we've got the Mandrake root. It's kind of weird that she would turn you into frog knowing that you're supposed to be coming back with the root. Like, how else would you hand her the root if you're a frog? I don't know. Great. Now we've got the Mandrake root. And then we learn her devious plot for the use of the Mandrake root. Her greatest creation. Mandrake Moose! Actually sounds kind of good. I don't know. So, should we reward me, let us live, and sends us out? Now, you're kind of probably sitting there going, why did we do all that? We, we basically ended up just giving her what she wanted. She wanted the Mandrake Root, we went in, we didn't get anything out of it. Well, the reason we did that was to set us up for the future. First off, the, we by going through all of that. Uh, including getting the uh, the undead ungent, there was um, thirty two total of thirty two points that you gained by going through that entire ordeal with Baba Yaga and the undead ungeon. So that's a significant amount of points to gain for doing this little side thing. You could now you can complete the game without doing any of that, and you would still be able to win, but you wouldn't have a perfect score and. So I don't always aim to get a perfect score, but I try to get as far as I can. So so let's go ahead and save the game. We've now completed a major piece of that, and uh, that tingling sensation is the undead ungent wearing off. So in other words, don't go back to the graveyard. So since we're out and about, um, now's really a great time for us to get over to um, Arana's Peace and, and sleep there for the night. So we're going to go south, and then we're going to... Um, Whoops, I'm too far south. I actually want to go east here, and we'll go as far east as we can without getting attacked by goblins. <laughs> we'll go all the way east to the farm, and then we'll head all the way north just like you would for Rana's Peace. Now that we're in Arana's Peace, great time. We don't need fruit, so we're all set there, but now's a great time. Go ahead and sleep all night. It's not going to be a long sleep because we've been, you know, up most of the night, but it's a, it's a good start. 
This way we're well rested for the next day. So now we're up, bright new day. And let's get this puppy going. So now we're really going to start getting into why we're here uh, in Spielberg. And really starting to solve a lot of their, their problems. So first things first, if you remember back to what the fox said at the very beginning when we, we released him. He told us to talk to the dryad. So that's really what we need to do right now. Okay, so we're going to head over to the Dryad. The Dryad is all the way in the southwest corner. So we're going to go all the way back down to the farm. And once at the farm, we're going to go to west and then south. Now, we'll know... Okay, you see, ah, a white stag. You have to find the white stag and then follow it to get to the dryad. You can't just walk to the dryads. So we found the white stag. He's going to jump off and go uh, to the west. So we're going to follow him. Here he is again. As we get closer, we're going to startle him. He's going to jump off, go west again. And we should now be at the dryads. And here we are as the big beautiful tree here. The white stag is here. And of course... This is where the dryad is. And now she's going to come out of the tree, I believe. Got a little bit closer. She's going to come out of the tree. And she's going to ask if we're one with the woods. Say yes. And she's going to ask us to help her. She wants a seed from the spore spitting spiria of the north so that she may plant it and preserve uh, the, the rare plant and then we'll become a true friend of the forest now we have to do this kind of prove ourselves so that we can get to the next piece which is this dispel portion that we're going to need so we now have to go to the spore spitting spiria area so we're going to go back to the farm we're going to go north as if we were going to Arana's Peace. So we're going to go three screens north. And then here, instead of going north, we're going to go west. And apparently we encountered somebody. I'm going to go ahead and back over west like we were going. And here we are at the spore spitting area. Now, if you notice, they've got the four, uh, look like almost Venus flytraps kind of in a way. Uh, and they, they're spitting this, it's a spore, it's a seed. They're spitting the seed between them. And your objective is you have to get it. Now, since we're a magic user, there's one simple way to do that. Use the fetch spell. Now, I will tell you. If you've not been practicing your skills uh, as you go along, this is not going to be easy. You're really going to have to work uh, on your intelligence, on your magic level, to be able to get the seed from these guys. Now, I've been working on it, and uh, that shouldn't be a problem, but it may take a couple tries in order to get it. So once you select the fetch spell, you're going to move into position, and then you're going to cast it. Now, unfortunately, no matter how high your uh, intelligence and magic is, you still need a certain skill level with the spell itself. And so it may take a few tries in order to uh, cast it, maintain concentration, and uh, uh, you know, eventually get the, the spore. So just keep trying. We're going to go ahead and cut ahead to where I actually do get the spore. Ta-da! We've got the spore. Now, there are other ways to go ahead and get that seed. If you have a really great throwing skill, uh, you can actually just pick up rocks and throw them and try to hit them, and that's how the thief and the fighter do it. Uh, but if you don't have a really high throwing skill and your magic user fetch is, is really the, the best way to do that. So now we're going to go ahead and go back to the um, back to the uh, dryad and give her the spore. 
So we're going to head as far south as we can, which will put us just one north of the graveyard, which is one west of the farm. And then we'll go west one, and then south again, and we should encounter the white stag, which will lead us back to the dryad. And there is the white stag, and of course we'll startle it, and we'll head west after it. And again, startle, and head west after it. And now we're back in with the dryad. We'll move in a little bit closer so the dryad comes out. And of course, yes, the answer is yes, we have your seed and we hand her the seed. And she's very grateful and she loves us and we earned points for doing that. There's an evil in the valley. She tells you about the prophecy that a hero will, will bring a young human out from his darkness. Uh, she thinks that we're the person that's going to do that. And we need to create a dispel potion. And the healer is going to make that for us. But in order to create that dispel potion, we need some ingredients. We need flowers from Arana's Peace. All right, well, that's great. We know where Arana's Peace is. Uh, we know how to get flowers from there. We may already have some on us. So good for us. Green fur. So think about, you know, who have we met before, or already that has green fur? Well, our friend the Meep has green fur. So definitely want to pay a visit to him. Fairy dust. Now, we haven't encountered any fairies yet. So we're going to have to figure out where the fairy dust is. A magic acorn. So that's something else we're going to have to figure out. And then flying water. Now, you may not know this, but you already know where the flying water is. And I'll, I'll show you guys where that is. Now she says farewell. She's going to go back and return to her concentration. But when she does so, something drops an acorn. Well, guess what? That's your magic acorn. So go ahead and pick up the magic acorn. You already have at least one of the ingredients. So go ahead and check your inventory. I know I happen to have Arana's flowers in here. So we're already in a good position. If you don't have Arana's flowers, you know where to get them. Go back to Arana's piece, grab a handful of flowers. Uh, most times, if you've been turning in Arana's flowers uh, to get earn money from the healer, you actually don't even need to give her any more flowers. She'll already kind of have them, uh, and so you won't have to do it again. So that's you're already one step ahead. So from here, we're going to go ahead and get the green... Um, the green fur, which is actually really close to us. So let's go ahead and head back east one. And then we're going to go north two. Here we are back at the mushroom circle. And then west. And this should bring us... Uh, west 2, and this will bring us back to the Meeps. And here we are at the Meeps, and there's our friend with the green fur. So let's go ahead and use our mouth on one of the Meeps that comes up. And they'll talk about us, and our green Meep friend will jump out. And we're going to talk to him, and we're going to ask him about fur. We're asking about green fur. Oh, yeah, we want some? Yeah! So he's going to go ahead and pull some green fur off of him and set it aside, and then we can go ahead and get it. He's going to go back in, hide, and then we can go up and grab the green fur. So now we've got green fur. So now we're just missing the fairy dust and the flying water. Flying water, like I said, very easy to get. You already know where it is. Remember the falls, the flying falls? Well, that's where the flying water is. So let's go ahead and head as far east from here as we can go, which will actually dead end us into the graveyard. And we're going to head back over to the Flying Falls. So we're going to go to the graveyard. We're going to head south from here. Two screens. And then we're going to head east. 
all the way, and this will take us to the Flying Falls. There's that weird log. And then the Flying Falls. Flying Falls, Flying Water. Now, you need an empty flask for this. You should have one, because when you drank the Undead po undead Ungent, or put it on you, you emptied out a flask, so now you have an empty flask. If you don't have an empty flask, just drink a potion. If you don't have any potions, then you're going to have to go buy a flask, and you can go to the dry goods shop back in town to buy one. So take the flask, go ahead, click it on the waterfall, and you will now have flying water. Okay? Uh, now that you've done that, you need fairy dust. Well, remember when I said about the mushroom ring that you don't want to go there at night and walk into the ring? Well, guess who hangs out at that ring? Fairies. Now, of course, you wouldn't know that unless you were wandering around at night. So it's a great time to go ahead and check and see what time of day it is. All right, it's mid-morning. It's still pretty early. So it's going to take a while for those uh, fairies to come out. So what we should do is see if there's anything else that we want to accomplish while we're wandering around. At this time, there really isn't. Um, so basically, while... This is all going on. I recommend you, if you want to bring in some more money, go ahead. If you want to train some more, um, work on your skills, climbing, uh, or, or you know, work on your spells, uh, do some battle with, um, with the monsters in the area, collect more flowers, or if you haven't done the mushrooms yet to turn in for more money, go ahead and do that. Work on whatever you want to work on. Um, essentially, once it becomes nighttime, you're going to want to head over uh, to the mushroom ring and that's where we'll pick back up